Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. In a lot of my previous videos, I've heavily emphasized the importance of knowing the pedigree of the metals you're going to machine and buying only favorable alloys and tempers of metal. Why? Because softer metals machine poorly. But what does machine poorly actually mean? Well, today we're going to machine two identical samples of metal, except one of them will be softened. Actually, since we have such a conveniently shaped piece of 6061T6 aluminum, let's do the machining tests on the same piece. We'll anneal one side and preserve the temper of the other side. You can anneal most non-ferrous metals by heating them up to a couple hundred degrees Celsius and then quenching them in water. Jewelers do this all the time because they work with metals that work harden. As you hammer or bend metals, they'll stiffen up and start cracking. Sort of like what happens when you bend a paperclip back and forth a couple times. Annealing resets this effect. I'm using a trick I found online to estimate the surface temperature of aluminum, mark the surface with a permanent marker, and when the ink begins to fade away, you're in the ballpark of about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Not super accurate, but it's indicative of a high enough temperature to affect the metal. To anneal aluminum properly, you need to hold it above 700 degrees Fahrenheit for 2-3 to three hours. What I'm doing here is only a partial annealing, but it will still be enough to illustrate some of the effects. I'm going to run the same toolpath on both sides of my aluminum using a 2mm single flute end mill. Single flutes are extremely clog resistant, so this cutter should do alright in these tests. On the left side, cutting aluminum in a T6 temper, we get exactly what we expect. Through pocketing, adaptive clearing, and contouring, normal cuts, and fairly clean edges. Let's throw an engraving on there as well. And now, let's repeat the same thing on the partially annealed side. No real drama machining the aluminum, but something is not quite right. The cuts are more ugly. These aren't just little chips that are lightly clinging on. The edges have a really nasty burr that feels quite unpleasant. The engraving too. Despite being such a light cut, it shows the same ugly quality. This is what softer and poorly machining grades of metal look like on the CNC, and this is with only a slightly annealed sample of aluminum. I'm nowhere close to demonstrating what the worst case scenario would look like with a fully annealed piece of aluminum. Cuts that look like this aren't the CNC's fault, it's not your end mill's fault, it's the material's fault. And kind of your fault too if you chose th If you don't know what alloy of metal you have, oftentimes it's best to just walk away. This is a copper sheet I found in a drawer in the office, purchased before my time and probably with no thought given to if it's the right alloy for machining. In tempered form, it turns out it machines like garbage. And in annealed form, it still machines like garbage, although in some respects I almost like the results better but neither of the results are what I would consider good. This is what C145 tellurium copper in an H04 hardened temper looks like being machined. Clean chips, just like in good aluminum or brass. This alloy is designed to be easy to machine, and comparing this stuff to the mystery copper, the difference is night and day. So the next time your cuts in metal are coming out tattered and ugly, and you're scrambling for new speeds and feeds, or you're cursing your CNC, don't forget to check your material. Hope this sheds some light on why I'm so picky about my alloys and their tempers. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.